Python is known for being many things. Versatile being one, easy to use being another. Speed is not exactly one of those qualities. With that being said, there's no reason you can't take things into your own hands and make sure your code is as performant as possible. As such, in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through five quick and easy optimizations that you can include in your code, all of which only require you to make very minimal changes indeed. On top of being able to speed your Python code up, you'll be able to boast to all your friends about all the cool tricks you know. If you found this video helpful at any point, then consider like it to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you can become either a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. Yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into the optimizations. The first optimization I want to talk about is using sets or frozen sets instead of lists and tuples for containment checks. This is arguably one of the bigger optimizations if you have enough elements to be working with. And I'll explain why once I've done a little bit of an example. So say you had a series of numbers and we had to find out as a list. So 1, 2, 76, 5, 4, 90 and 14, let's say. And say we had x, which was some sort of input. So enter a number. And then you wanted to see if x was in numbers. And if it was, you wanted to do some logic. I could probably go in again, actually. Have that even, even bigger than I normally do. So in this example, our numbers are stored in a list. And our containment check will simply uh, run through each element in the list and check to see if our number matches and if it doesn't then it won't execute anything in here however if we were to do it as a set like this instead of running through everything um, until it found it it would hash the variable and basically be able to perform a single operation check as to whether or not it was in that set or not. Now, of course, this means there's huge speed up as there's only a single operation that has to be performed or a single main operation, I guess, that has to be performed rather than you know iterating through each element and checking to make sure whether it's in the list. Uh, for those of you that are big into big O notation, that means lists and tuples are approximately ON and set hashing is approximately O1. There is a little bit of contention as to whether or not it is actually 01, but it's close enough in my view that it doesn't really make much of a difference. Now I do have these benchmarks. I'm not gonna be showing them in the video that I will be linking them in the description below if you wanna play with them yourself and verify my results. But I do wanna show off this graph, um, this graph that I got, whoops. <laughs> and this shows um, essentially, so on a 100 element collection, how long it took to find the the number in uh, on the x-axis 500,000 times in seconds as on the y-axis. So over here would be the uh, the best case scenario and over here would be the worst. So as you can see, listen to, if I actually zoom in a bit, I might be able to zoom in. I don't know how I navigate this now. Okay, there we go. You can see that listen tuples are actually ever so slightly faster if your element uh, if your list has like one, two, or maybe three elements in it. But anything more than that, and it goes off the top of the graph here. I don't know, I actually don't know how to zoom out at this point because that's not working. Oh dear, I'm gonna have to just reload the image, I think. There we go. Uh, sets and frozen sets are this line down here. The frozen set line was just drawn on top of the set line, which I find quite entertaining. But the general idea is that if you're not lucky enough to have the element you want to find be one of the first few elements in the list, then doing a set uh, is gonna be a lot faster than using a list or a tuple. It's worth keeping in mind if you are kind of dynamically creating. So if you were to create the set here instead of up here, that sets do take a little bit longer to create than the either lists or tuples. So that overhead would need to be taken into consideration, especially if, you know, a six element, it might not be worth it. But for a hundred element, for example, or like a million, especially, it definitely absolutely would be. So the second optimization I want to talk to you about is not using the dict update method where at all possible and instead assigning a value directly to a dictionary key. So in an example where we wanted to map um, an ASCII character to its ASCII value, one particularly non-performant way you could do this was is by creating an empty dict and then doing 4i in range 255 and then x.update 
uh, having character of i map to the actual number. Now this may be how a beginner would see you know, creating a dictionary. In reality, you would not want to do this, but you would instead want to do something like this. As um, even though uh, the key doesn't exist, you can still assign to it, and using this assign method will create a well, not method, but you know, assign functionality. I guess will create a new dictionary key value pair if one doesn't exist. Uh, I will actually show you the benchmark for this one because it's not too long and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it all. So if we run uh, this benchmarks uh, and then dict key. So it's, it's actually the exact same example we did before, just run 250,000 times and then we'll get, I used append here, I don't know why, but you can see that assigning to the value is significantly quicker. In this particular case, it's about three times faster than using uh, the update method. And especially if you're creating a lot of dictionaries in your program, this could save a whole ton of time. <laughs> An even better way you can do this is by using our third optimization that I want to talk to you about, which is by using comprehensions. Now you can use comprehensions for lists, sets, and dictionaries. You can't do it with tuples because if you do something like i uh, for i in range uh, five, for example, uh, this will be a generator, not a tuple. If you want it to be a tuple, you'll need to provide the tuple here. But anything like a list or something, you can do like that. With a set, you can do like that. Or if we were to write this example in dictionary comprehension, we would do something like x equals uh, character i and then i for i in range 255. It'll <laughs> naturally black will put it on one line. We can see not only is it a little bit clearer, it's also creating it in place rather than creating the object and then having to append stuff to it later on. And if we run the benchmark for this, I'm not going to show you it, but I will at least run it live. Uh, I don't remember how long these take. There we go. You can see that it's not a huge optimization this time around, uh, or at least for list comprehensions. Uh, set comprehensions, it is actually quite a bit quicker I'm using set.append. Uh, I actually might show you the, the, the benchmark because it might give a bit of context into how this all works. Uh, so list is using x.append versus a list comprehension. For a set, it's using x.add. And for a dictionary, it's using x.update. And here you can see that uh, list comprehensions are a little bit faster, set comprehensions are a decent amount faster, and dictionary comprehensions aren't that much faster. Um, so it's not much of a, uh, well, it's, it's certainly a lot faster than our append here, or update. Um, but in terms of comprehensions versus assignments, it more comes down to a case of readability over performance. While a comprehension is technically more performant, it is also more readable in my opinion. So it is still an optimization nonetheless. The fourth optimization is that Python's built-ins are always faster than the alternative. So one of these case, well, two of these cases, I suppose, is any and all, which have exactly the same problem. So I'm only gonna show you the differences between one. Uh, but say if we had, uh, a range, so numbers equals, and we had a list, i for i in range 10. And we wanted to see um, if any of them were even. We could uh, do if any uh, i modulo, it'd be modulo 2 equals 0 for i in numbers and do something like that which is very readable, it's very nice to see, but it's not actually as quick as defining our own any, which takes a sequence like so, and for i in sequence, if i modulo two equals zero, return true, and if um, it never gets to a true state, it returns false. So while this is a lot more verbose, it is actually faster so long as we return true at the first instance where anything can be returned. If you don't exit early and you allow the entire sequence to be checked and then say return like a bool, it will be significantly slower to do any and all works in exactly the same way. So if you were to run these benchmarks, um, 
So I've got uh, the best and worst case in all situations. So we can see here that in all situations, our custom implementation, which is you know very similar to this up here, is a lot faster than our you know potentially more readable solution. In some cases, quite a lot faster. So in the worst case for any, our custom any is actually significantly quicker. In the worst case for an all, it's a lot faster. In the in the best case for an all, it's a little bit less, but it's still a pretty significant speed difference. So don't always trust Python built-ins. Most of them are faster, like sorted, for example, is the fastest way you're going to sort stuff in Python unless you use something like Scython. But not all built-ins are faster than custom logic. The final optimization I want to show you in this video doesn't come with any benchmarks because it's just a neat little trick that you can employ. So if we did say import logging, uh, import time, yeah, and it is a logging optimization for those logging fanatics out there like myself. Uh, set up a basic, con oh, don't know why I'm doing that, dot basic config, uh, say logging, dot info and then uh, log equals logging dot get a logger and a username and then say we have this expensive function down here which sleeps for two seconds you know very expensive operation sleeping and then it just returns the time since we have a time imported and then if we run this now if we were to have log.debug, uh, the time is, and then we pass it a decimal formatting. Uh, that's a nice little trick as well to use percentage style formatting rather than f-strings in logging. Just make sure that parameters are kind of lazily formatted as and when. But even so, like sometimes you need to actually run a function in order to get something and that's gonna slow your program down. So if we do login enabled here, um, take zero position arguments, but one was given. Really? Okay, we'll just get rid of this then, I suppose. Um, you can see that it still has to wait the two seconds, and then we don't even get anything out of the logging. If we did, uh, I guess it would be level equals logging uh, dot debug then. If you did that, it waits for two seconds to calculate our thing, and then we get some debug logging here. But it waits even though we don't have it enabled um, because we still have to run the function even though we are kind of lazily evaluating these as much as we can. But we can use if log dot is enabled, and this does not appear in the, uh, there we go, in the, um, in the autocomplete for some time for some reason. But if we have is enabled for logging dot debug, and then debug it. If you run it now, then we still have to wait because we have the debug logging. But if I set this back to the default, it exits a lot quicker because we don't have to wait for it because we see, oh, we, uh, you know, we're not enabled for debug logging. We don't need this, so we're not going to calculate this expensive function. So if you have a particularly expensive function in your code and you didn't know about this, then I'd recommend um, shoving this in various different places. You don't need it for absolutely everything, really, I would say, uh, but certainly for your more expensive operations. If you don't need to be uh, logging debug messages, then don't, is my, my advice to you, really. That's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you have any questions about what you've seen or any ideas on videos you want me to do in the future, then do let me know in the comments below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I want to say a big thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazar Rosham and the third for being so generous. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about some, some other speed related stuff. I compare the speed of if and match statements in that video, which is an interesting you know, topic of discussion to say the least. So I'll see you for that.